Hi, welcome to this uh, video. This is for OCR 21st Century Science. We're looking at Unit P4, explaining motion, and this is Lesson 2, and this is trying to explain how things move. We're going to look at some specific examples. We're going to look at the idea of how rockets move. We're going to look at the idea of how wheels move on a bike or a car. And we're going to look at the idea of walking. So rockets and jet engines work in pretty much the same way. The rocket or the jet engine uh, has a reaction inside it uh, in the case of a rocket or in the case of a jet engine it sucks air in and it pushes that air out of the back with a big force. Now, as we learned in the previous lesson, if a force on the engine is pushing air or hot gases out the back, then because an interaction pair will be created, then an equal and opposite force must be created, which pushes the engine forward. So, key idea to remember here is the idea that the rocket or the jet engine pushes on the gas, which is the red arrow, and therefore to reciprocate, because of the idea of interaction pairs, then the gas pushes on the rocket. So it's an example of an interaction pair force, and it doesn't matter if it's flying horizontally, like in a jet engine, or vertically in a rocket engine. The reason it works is because the engine applies a large force and pushes hot gases out under tremendous force and therefore the rocket pushes the gases out and in reciprocation the gas pushes on the rocket and that way the rocket or the jet engine ends up moving in that direction. So that's rockets. Okay, so for wheels, either on a bike or a car, So here's my wheel on my vehicle and if I want to go in this direction then my wheels are going to turn in this direction. Now because of the grip or the friction between the, the tyre and the floor, and we'll be looking at friction in the next video, then the floor and the tyre interact with each other in as much as the tyre is trying to push the floor backwards. So the wheel pushes the floor backwards. Because an interaction pair is created, then the floor then pushes the, the wheel forwards. So I have the same idea again. Wheel pushes the floor backwards, so the floor pushes the wheel forwards. And Obviously, to do that, you need a certain amount of friction or grip. Um, so let me just make a note in here. So wheel pushes floor, and therefore the floor with an equal and opposite interaction pair force pushes the wheel, and that's how you move forward. Now then, if you are on an icy surface or one with a gravel surface then you can't move anywhere so if you imagine a car on ice or a car on gravel and the reason the, the wheel can't make you move forwards is because the amount of force that it can apply backwards becomes very limited so I just draw this in red if the floor is made of ice then there is no friction between the wheel and the ground and therefore the amount of force that's applied backwards is very tiny. The wheel cannot get any grip on the ice. Because there is not much backwards force then the interaction pair force that I create is also tiny so there's not enough force to push it forward. Now the same happens on the gravel surface or a, a wet muddy track. If you turn your wheel that force will generally just throw back some 
grit or some stones or bits of water and mud. Now the amount of force needed to throw that water back is not very big. And because it's only applying a small force to those things, then it only gets a small force in the other direction. So if there's no friction or limited friction, then we don't get a forward force. So the same applies to trying to walk. If you're trying to walk, uh, you are on the ground and you apply a force backwards. So foot pushes four backwards, therefore the floor pushes the foot forwards. Unless, of course, you're on ice, in which case you can't apply a big backwards force because you cannot get any grip, and therefore the interaction pair force is also tiny. So same again, foot pushes floor, floor pushes foot, and that's how we move. Thanks very much. Uh, next lesson we're going to look at friction.